Hello YouTubers. Being a vocal proponent of evolution makes me a big target for anti-evolution attacks, and I sometimes find myself getting into arguments where I lose my cool and respond to mean-spirited attacks with more mean-spirited attacks. It's really not the sort of behavior I'd like to promote, since I much prefer the kill him with kindness approach of turning the other cheek when provoked in this way. Recently I've been corresponding with a Christian, Moonlight Bateman, in what seemed like it might end up as a vicious argument at first. He deleted my comment on his video, and when I asked him about it, he claimed that it was atheist propaganda. But I was polite and persistent, and it quickly became a very productive and interesting conversation. I've asked and received his permission to use some of that conversation on this video. Since our correspondence covered many diverse topics, I've pieced together for this video parts of a discussion about randomness, accident, and God's role in nature. Moonlight Bateman asked, What guides and drives natural selection? Remember, nature is not intelligent, yet you give it the characteristics of intelligence. I replied, This is just a semantic thing. It is called natural selection as an analogy to a similar thing that farmers and ranchers do with their crops and cattle. Darwin referred to this as artificial selection. Mutations create variation that affects things like crop size or milk production, and the farmer or rancher selects the one he wants, thus eliminating less useful genes and selecting better ones. In the natural world, this happens as a re natural result of the interactions between organisms and each other in their environment. None of this means that God didn't intend it to work that way in the first place, but it doesn't require miracles to do anything. Simply the beautiful system of interacting forces we consider nature that can be studied and understood by science. Maybe studying nature brings us a better understanding of the Creator. Moonlight Bateman said, I still don't see a definition of the intelligence that designed and operates natural selection. I replied, that isn't my job, it's yours. I just explained how natural selection needs as much guidance as gravity does. If you think things that occur naturally require guidance, then feel free to imagine what the nature of that guiding force might be like. The unknowable isn't really my concern as a scientist. Moonlight Bateman said, Either it is done on purpose, or it is random and accidental. Those seem to be the only choices. I replied, those aren't the only choices. Can you predict the time when the tides will be at their highest and lowest? If so, then the tides are not random, though they might be considered accidental. That all depends on whether the tides have an intended purpose, which is not something I, or science in general, can address. Random and accident aren't the same thing. The tides are not random at all, and neither is natural selection in, exact, in the exact same way. Both are highly predictable and non-random because we understand the underlying mechanism responsible for their behavior. Moonlight Bateman said, you say it is not random or accidental, so that begs the question, what is the intelligence that guides natural selection? Nature? Again, not an option unless you expect me to believe that nature is intelligent. I replied, the same intelligence that guides Earth around the Sun, naturally occurring phenomena. Maybe God is ultimately behind it, but that's beyond my ability to, to determine. Now the crux of this discussion I had with Moonlight Bateman is in the meaning of accidental. As I pointed out, natural selection, like the tides and gravity, is not random at all. It is predictable and perfectly explainable through natural population dynamics. Whether or not it is accidental depends on whether something intended it to happen that way, the way it is. This is not a scientific question, but a theological one. I think that most people who are against the science of evolution are against it because they think that biologists are claiming that there's no purpose to anything we see. Any biologist who makes this claim is not making a scientific claim, but a theological one, a claim that is impossible to test empirically. Understanding how something happened and continues to happen is not the same as understanding why it happened and continues to happen. Few people get upset at physicists for explaining how Earth revolves around the sun, and they shouldn't get upset at biologists for explaining how diversity arises in living things. Accepting that the scientists have got it right when it comes to understanding the physical, testable universe doesn't mean that there's nothing behind it. That's a completely separate question. 
Accepting the findings of science doesn't make someone an atheist. The more people understand that, the less opposition to science there will be. And understanding the physical world through science is important for us all, especially in democratic countries like the U.S., where public opinion matters when it comes to policy decisions. Thanks for watching, and peace.